Hello, hello. We are back. Our topic today is acapella singing and along with that, some advanced intonation. Um, if you're new here, I'm Camille, the 30 Day Singer, and I'm going to go over the agenda really quick just so you know what to expect. We will be here for a whole hour and at the very end, we'll have some time reserved to answer questions, but you're welcome to put some questions in the chat as we go. So in this video, uh, we'll define and give some real life examples of acapella acapella singing. I will answer the question, should beginners practice acapella? The unique demands of acapella singing, including staying in tune, blending with other singers, and dynamics and phrasing in acapella music, and then as I said, Q&A at the very end. Um, please also check the video description. I have three resources for you to check out later. Um, the first is a tutorial on 30 Day Singers site if you are a member, um, and then the next two are YouTube videos on here. One that's ear training for harmony and another that's learning to harmonize um, both full hours. So first, defining and giving some examples of acapella singing. So acapella as um, <sighs> similar to many other musical terms, um, is an Italian term. So a lot of musical vocab is Italian. Uh, just so you know, forte, piano, pianissimo, crescendo, all this stuff. Um, if you start learning about music and how to read music, you'll start learning some Italian. Um, so acapella is Italian for in the manner of the chapel or in the style of the chapel, um, meaning chapel music or church music. Um, it's multi-part vocal music with no instruments. Um, although if you're a music historian, you might know that sometimes there might be doubling of vocal parts with instruments. Um, so the modern definition is just unaccompanied vocal music. It could be one person singing a cappella. it could be a group. So a real life example of an a cappella performance uh, would be a lot of times at um, sports games when they sing the national anthem. If it's one person and you don't hear any instruments along with them, they're singing that a cappella. Um, most of us, when it's a friend or family member's birthday party and we sing happy birthday, usually we're not accompanied. Um, it's a cappella, just voices. Um, there's also, uh, there was a singing competition series for a cappella groups, and uh, one of the most famous and popular from that is called the Pentatonics. So if you're not familiar with them, you can check them out. Pentatonics with an X at the end. Um, and they are an acapella group uh, with modern acapella music. Oftentimes it's going to be probably three to four, if it's a small group, um, three to four singers, and then one singer who either provides bass and beatboxes or just does vocal percussion or beatboxing. Um, you can have a bigger acapella group as well, but oftentimes that's that's kind of the, the standard, I would say would be, you know, soprano, alto, tenor, bass, and vocal percussion. Um, so uh, addressing the question, should beginners practice a cappella or unaccompanied? And my answer for this, if I have to give a blanket statement, is not at first, unless you have a crazy good ear. So if you grew up singing, if you play an instrument and you know that you have really good intonation, um, that you can match pitch, that you can stay in tune, um, then you might be a good candidate for practicing a cappella. Um, but I would really, really caution most beginners against practicing a cappella. Um, the reason is you, you might not have developed the ability to stay within a key or to stay in tune. Um, and you'll have no way of knowing whether you're in tune or not. Um, so if, uh, let me give an example for you. A lot of times you're going to hear singers uh, singing the national anthem and they will be drifting away from a key and they will have no idea. So if you've ever heard someone go, um, da, 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 and then they're supposed to sing, and the rocket's red glare, to stay in tune within that key. But what a lot of singers do, beginning singers, da, 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 bum, and the rocket's red glare, 
to avoid that high note, they just change keys and they have no idea that they're doing it because there's no instrument grounding them and giving them that key center or tonal center. Um, so if that confused you, it's okay. Um, just remember, if you're a beginner and you're not sure if you have wonderful intonation or not, then I caution you against practicing a cappella for the moment. Um, for a lot of beginning singers, you will benefit from using an ear training app or, or a chromatic tuner of some kind. Um, I'll, I'll put some links in, in the video description a little bit later. I'll just bold that to remind myself to do that. Um, because again, a cappella singing assumes that you have a sense of key without any instruments providing the key for you. Um, if you do insist on practicing a cappella or you need to practice a cappella, um, return to a karaoke track of some kind or a piano track of some kind um, very, very often. So let's say, for example, you are wanting to practice a cappella and you're practicing the national anthem, um, then an example of how you can make this work for you is figure out what key you're in. So maybe you're practicing along with a track. Maybe it's in the key of G. Oh, say. If you want to practice this, you'll have to know how to get back on track. So maybe you're going to practice just one, one line at a time. Oh, say, can you see? And then keep, you know, rechecking. By the dawn's early light, what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming. So I'm, I'm just kind of keeping on droning that, that G chord. Um, this is assuming that you don't play. Otherwise, you could actually play the chords. Um, Okay, um, and then at the very least, uh, get a tuning or piano app. You don't need a keyboard. Um, there's plenty of great virtual keyboards online. Just search for them and make sure that you look for one that has the key or sorry, the pitch letter names on the keys themselves um, so that you don't need to know what, you know, what key is what pitch letter name. Okay, hope that made sense. Um, so the unique demands of a cappella singing, um, having great tuning, being able to blend with other singers, having really good control of dynamics, and then this group awareness um, over what you sound like as a solo singer. So as a solo singer, you only have to worry about yourself. Um, sure, you have to stay in time with the band and stay, you know, in one key <laughs> with the track. But when it's a cappella, you are creating all of the sounds. Um, there's no drummer. There's no bass line. Um, it's just voices. And so um, you have to be really, really in control of your instrument. Um, you're just a lot more exposed, right? It, if you have a piano or a guitar that you're playing with, your voice can kind of disappear a little bit at times. Um, with a cappella music, there is nowhere to hide. Um, and so you have to really think of yourself as just one part of this group rather than I'm a solo singer. And if I make a mistake, it doesn't matter. I can get back on track. If you make a mistake in a, in a group situation, you might throw off someone else and then it's, it's tough. So um, first skill we need. So we're just going to go, go over these in order. The first being staying in tune and we'll do some exercises to practice blending with other singers. We'll talk about that and then dynamics and phrasing. Okay, so staying in tune, one way that you can practice this in more of an advanced way is singing a song through a cappella. Get, get your starting pitch. So whether you just choose one randomly or like I said before, get a track, figure out what key it's in, and then what, what your starting pitch is. Um, sing the entire song through, and then see if you stayed in that key, and you'll check by playing that same starting pitch again. So, um, let's see. I think I think a G would be an okay key. Mm, let me do one for low voices and one for high voices. I think that's actually gonna be the easiest for us. So low voices will be in the key of G. High voices, uh, I guess, will be in the key of C. So low voices, altos, 
baritones, basses. You're going to sing in the key of G. Your starting pitch is D. So if you're an alto, D4. If you're a baritone or bass, D3. So here's the challenge. Um, I'll sing with you one time and then I'll lay off the second time. Okay, so it can be a real test. And I'm gonna test myself as well. This is gonna be fun. <laughs> so I'm gonna sing through this entire song. Remember our starting pitch is D. Once we get through the whole song, we'll start it again and see if we're still singing D as the starting pitch. Maybe I should have chosen a shorter song. I think I will. Let's do happy birthday, because otherwise this exercise is going to take a really long time. Um, <laughs> so let's make our starting pitch a G. G3 or G2. And we're going to go happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear person. Happy birthday to you. Okay. And then we'll start the song again. Happy birthday. And hopefully we're still singing a G. Does this make sense? Let me check in the comments to make sure I'm not, uh, not confusing people terribly. Okay. Uh, Manuel is excited. So is Tyler and low country Hooper saying they enter the notes in Muse score as a guide. That's amazing. That's, that's awesome. If you have the ability to do that, cool. All right, ready? Low voices, you're singing with me. Um, this is a test for me and you. Singing a cappella, happy birthday, starting on G. Here we go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear. Mm -hmm. Happy birthday to you. Start again. Hap and hold it. And now let's check. We're still in tune. Awesome. Okay. You try it without me this time. I'm going to kind of sing. I'll just like mouth the words. Ready? Ooh, this is fun. Low voices. G3 or G2? Here you go. Happy birthday. Hold your starting note and let's check it. How'd it go? Okay, we're gonna do it for higher voices now. So let's go. We're gonna move, move up for higher voices. So tenors and sopranos, you're gonna start on C, either C4 or C3. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear person, happy birthday to you. Okay, sopranos here and tenors down here. Remember you're starting on C and then when you restart we're going to see, are you still on C? Here we go. Happy birthday to you. Practice round. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear someone. Happy birthday to you. Hap, let's check. Nice. So, um, okay, test time. You alone, start here, even if you got off that time, get re-centered, starting on C, and go. Happy. Hold it, we'll check. 
How's it going? I'm going to check in the comments real quick. So um, Alan is saying, is it normal to sing flat? I would say, yeah, Alan. <laughs> um, I would say it's very, very normal to fall flat. That's super, super common. And I might be falling flat when I'm singing a cappella. That might be what you're hearing. But what we're testing is, are we staying in this key that we chose? And when we restart the song, is our starting pitch the same as it was at the start? So we're not getting into the nitty gritty about is every pitch we sing perfectly in tune, although that's important. But what we're testing here, what we're practicing is holding the key in our brain and being able to sing in that key with no other pitch reference except for our starting note. Um, so let's let's keep practicing this. Let's, um, what would be another another good, maybe like a Christmas song we could practice with? I think let's practice with Silent Night. Yeah, let's practice with Silent Night. So same exercise. Um, it's a little bit longer. I need to figure out a good key for everybody. I guess we'll go back to key of G. So key of G, you're actually gonna start on D. I know it's a little confusing, but trust me. Low voices, we're gonna sing Silent Night one time through, and then we'll start it again. And this is our, our practice, and then it'll be the test. Here we go. Low voices starting on either D4 or D3. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round yon virgin mother and child, holy infant so tender and mild, sleep in heavenly peace, sleep in heavenly peace. I feel like I fell flat. Sigh, there's our starting note. Let's see if I was right. Okay, so when we repeat D4 or D3 is where we'd start again. Silent. How did it go if you were singing with me that time? Let's do a different key for, I think, basically just for tenors because sopranos could have sung that. But um, tenors, let's go. Hmm. Let's put you in the key of C as well. Oh, I forgot the test. It's test time. Sorry, low voices. Key of G. Silent. Either starting on D4 or D3. Here you go. Silent. Holding your starting note, let's check. How'd you do? All right, let's try it um, high voices now. Key of C, but we're starting on G. Silent night. Or really this is for tenors. But sopranos, you could sing up there. All right. Practice round. 
Here we go. One, two, three, ready, sing. Are you ready? G4, G3. Use a chromatic tuner if you're not sure. Here we go. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round yon virgin mother and child, holy infant so tender and mild, sleep in heavenly peace. So we start over again. Here's your starting pitch. Sigh. Okay. Ooh, that's hard to do. You can, I'm, I'm struggling to do all these things at once. Test time. Higher voices, sopranos, G4 or G3 for tenors. Here you go. I'm not singing or playing this time. One, two, three. Here you go. Silent. Hold your note, hold your note. So when you restart G4 or G3, this is some tricky stuff. Let me know how this is going. Are you succeeding? Are you struggling? What's happening? Um, <laughs> Oh, Manuel, it's okay if you don't know the lyrics. You can just sing. Doo, 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 doo. Um, someone is asking. Oh, nice. Low country hooper said a hair flat, but not too bad. Awesome. Um, and grand solar minimum for reels. Is it more common to sing flat when you're trying to sing low or high, or does it vary? My guess is it varies. I would say in general, it's more common to sing flat overall, like regardless. Um but if you're reaching a point where a pitch is too low for you, like a little bit earlier in this lesson, I was trying to sing a pitch that was kind of too low for me, um, then it would be more common to go sharp because your voice is going to stay where it's more comfy. Um, but yeah, if you're trying to sing high, yeah, it just depends. It just depends because I have some students who going for a high note, they overshoot and they sing sharp. Others that don't go quite high enough and they fall flat. So we'll talk about some tuning issues um, very, very soon. And Alan is asking, is there a quick fix for singing in tune most of the time? Um, I wouldn't say that there's a quick fix. Um, no, I would not say there's a quick fix. Uh, what you need is either a teacher to tell you or you need technology to tell you. So that's why at the very beginning said, get an ear training app or a chromatic tuner app um, so that you can have that feedback in real time. Um, that's the only way. And, and knowing some common tuning issues is also helpful. So let's, let's talk about that. Um, so you can practice singing a song a cappella, get your starting pitch, see if re you return to that same pitch on the repeat, um, find, Oh, I'm going to skip that tip for now and, and go straight to being aware of common pitch issues. Um, so Alan and everybody, there are some common kind of pitfalls to be aware of. And once you're aware of them, then you can be extra, extra careful in those moments. So um, repeated notes, if you're singing one note, for example, if we're singing Jingle Bells and we're going Jingle Bells, Jingle Bells, um, it's super, super common for those pitches to start to fall flat. Whenever you have a repeated note, um, 
kind of just like we we get a little bit lazy and we think, oh yeah, this note, I got it. And we're not quite as uh, energetic or intentional about being really in tune. So if you're singing jingle bells, jingle bells, um, the correction, if, if you find that it's starting to fall flat, the correction would be um, pretending that each of those pitches is a fresh pitch, that you didn't just sing that pitch, you're singing this pitch for the first time. Instead of thinking, ching, okay, I'm gonna be on that note for a long time, jingle bells, jingle bells, and starting to fall flat. Jingle bells, jingle bells, up, up, up. That's the only way to stay in tune <laughs> if you're falling flat is thinking up, being really intentional. Um, another common pitch issue is when you have a descending line. So let's say, um, I'm trying, trying to think of one in the song that we just sang. So maybe when we were going sleep in heavenly, maybe you fell too far flat on heavenly. Maybe you, obviously that's an exaggeration, but maybe you fell a little bit too far flat on that descending line. Um, in vocal exercises, if you have a five, four, three, two, one situation. Um, it's super common to fall flat, especially on the three. So if you're going five, four, three, I'm flat. Five, four, three, now I'm not two, one. So with descending lines, you don't wanna think down, even though the pitch is going down. You actually want to think up to counteract that that tendency to kind of sink with the pitch. Um, and then large leaps, both up and down. And we can see that going both ways. If we're going a uh, twinkle, twinkle, um, you might be a little too heavy going into that and go twinkle, twinkle, and fall woefully flat. Or you might think too high and go twinkle, twinkle and now be sharp. So I, I've really seen it both ways. That's why I'm not giving a blanket statement. Um, <clears throat> but I guess, Alan, if you're still here, to answer your question, one quick fix that I can think of would be singing those pitches in your head um, and having a mental map of the melody. So if we're singing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, um, we could sing it, twinkle, twinkle, little star, da, 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 da. We probably all know that melody, right? Um, and you don't have to read sheet music or put it in muse score, as one person was saying. Um, but it is super helpful if you can visualize internally or even use your hand to visualize, twinkle, twinkle, that from the first twinkle to the second twinkle is a large leap. It's not just twinkle, twinkle. No, it's a big jump. Twinkle, twinkle. And then little, little is a little step up. Star is the same pitch on your second twinkle. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. And then we have a descending line. How I wonder what you are. And now we've returned to our starting note, twinkle, right? So this is something that you can do, um, I guess, having some music theory knowledge would make it easier. But I really encourage you to use your hand to visualize and really internalize what your melody is doing. Um, so those, I guess, would be the two quick fixes that I, that I thought of are singing the pitch in your head. We call that audiating. And then having a mental map or a, you know, visual map of the melody. Um, that way, if you know twinkle to twinkle is a big jump and you don't sing that big jump, there's going to be a bit of co cognitive dissonance there. If you go twinkle, twinkle, that should give you pause that you're like, oh, wait, it's a big jump. I know it's supposed to be a big jump. And yet I sang a small step. Does that make sense? Um, hope it does. Okay. Um, so 
Uh, my next tip for joining an acapella group or uh, just singing acapella is to practice your part and know it cold before you ever join the other singers. Um, this is quite a big learning curve when you go from singing your harmony part or maybe you're lucky enough to be on the melody and then you join these other singers. It is so, so tough. So we're going to practice that. We're actually going to practice you singing the melody and I'm gonna sing a harmony. Um, we'll try it with, uh, I think, Silent Night. I think that's a, a internationally well-known song that we can try. Um, so Silent Night, um, let's try to pick a key that will be good for most people. I think, let me do a little bit of math real quick. I think A is going to be the closest key we get to that's going to work for most, most folks. All right. So if we're in the key of A, silent night for high voices and silent night for low voices. So the lowest pitch you'll have to sing for low voices is A2 or A3 for high voices. And then the highest pitch, da, da, ba, 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 ba. I guess that da, is going to be the highest note. So that's going to be D5 or D4. I think this is a good compromise key. <laughs> um, that's not a phrase, but I think it should be. All right. So here's how it's going to go. We're going to practice the melody, everybody together. Um, then you are going to keep singing the melody while I sing a harmony part. So we'll get a chance to practice you remaining on your part, not being distracted or swayed by hearing one other part. Keep in mind with acapella singing, especially if it's an acapella group or an acapella choir, there are more than just two parts going on. Um, but if it's a big enough group, you're gonna have someone else singing your part. So that's kind of nice. Okay. Um, here we go. We're going to practice the melody. I'm going to play the chords just to get. <laughs> um, I'm just, I'm reading the comments real quick. Low Country Hooper says, I sing alto in my choir and have a lot of repeated notes. It's a killer. Oh, man. I sing alto in choir most of the time as well. So any of those inner voices, altos and tenors, you can feel our pain. A lot of times you're going to have these repeated notes. So yeah, think of them as, as fresh pitches and, and just think up even if you're staying on the same note or going down. Okay. Um, <laughs> Hi, welcome, Valerie. I'm getting the chords for Silent Night for us to do some practicing. So we're going to scaffold this, this sucker. Um, I'm not going to jump you into singing a cappella right away. I'm going to play chords for you. You can get the, get the key in your head because then the chords are going to be gone. Okay. So here we go. Everyone's singing the melody right now. Silent night. All right. Starting on E4 or E3. One, two, three. Here we go. Silent night. Holy night. All is calm. All is bright. Round yon virgin mother and child. Holy infant so tender and mild. Ooh. Sleep in heavenly peace. Sleep in heavenly peace. I'm trying to sing quietly and breathily so I'm not too overwhelming and it's not going well because breath support does not happen. <laughs> okay, um, let's do one time through, one more time through. And I'm going to play 
a lower melody this time. Just send them some, some love to the tenors, baritones, and basses, okay? So higher voices, please sing along. You're up there. I'm just gonna play the lower octave this time. One, two, three, here we go. If my bad playing messed you up, uh, here it is, the sleep in heavenly peace. Here it is. I wasn't prepared for that. Excellent. Okay, so now you sing the melody a cappella. I will... I'm gonna play the chords and quietly sing a harmony part, okay? Actually, even more scaffolding. I'm not gonna sing anything. Sing the melody, I'm gonna play the chords. So the chords right now are providing what the rest of the singers would provide, okay? So if we had some singers going, ooh, and you were singing silent night, okay? E4 or E3. There's your starting pitch. I'll count you off. One, two, three, one, two, three. And then you start on the next bar. Okay. One, two, three, one, two, three. Hold that last note, peace. You should be singing either A3 or A2. All right, this time I'm gonna sing a harmony part, but I'm still gonna play the chords so you have that grounding, okay? You're on melody. Sigh, so starting E4 or E3. I'm gonna sing something different, so this time, don't pay attention to me. <laughs> try to try to stay solid with your melody. Here's your pitch. Get that in your head. It's E4, E3. Again, I'm going to count off one, two, three, two, two, three, and then we all sing. Um, let me give you a little lead in. Two, three, two, two, three. So So I tried not to step on your part. I was singing a harmony part that was different than the melody. And I think I only stepped on your part at the very end. We were supposed to end on the same pitch. Peace. How did it go? Let me know. How'd it go? If you tried. Is good? Okay. 
So next piece of scaffolding removed. I'm not going to play anything on the piano. I'm just going to sing a harmony part. You're gonna stay on the melody. All right, yay. Okay, I don't know what the, the sad eyes mean, Manuel, but Low Country Hooper says that was fun. Awesome. Um, Valerie, if you can't sing that high, it's okay. You can drop down the octave. So you can start. Silent night, holy night. All is calm, all is bright. Um, it's a little, little bit trickier to do that way. But for now, for today, just sing the notes you can. It's all right if you fall off on a couple. Here we go. We are grounded in the key of A. You are singing the melody, my friends. This time, no piano, just a cappella. I'm going to be singing a harmony, and that might throw you off. Try to tune me out. <clears throat> There's your starting pitch. Get it really solid. Your first line, let me play for you. Counting off threes. Two threes. <laughs> One, two, three, two, two, three. Silent night, holy night. All is calm, all is bright. Round yon virgin, mother and child, holy infant, so tender and mild, sleep in heavenly peace, sleep in heavenly peace. How'd it go? Did you still end up on this note at the end? If that was difficult, then what you would want to do is practice that melody of yours or harmony part. If, you, if you've got harmony, practice that by yourself, no other voices. But then the way that we did it, kind of using some scaffolding, I know that's like a teachery term, but um, that's a really good way to go bit by bit. <laughs> Yay. Um, Low Country Hooper says, you make me sound better. Can you sing with me all the time? Yay. So that's, that is the goal is that we improve each other's sound when we're harmonizing. That's awesome. Um, so if that was a huge struggle for you, then you would want to practice your melody or harmony with the guide track, whatever that is, um, for a much longer time. And then take the guide track away, see if you can still sing your harmony or melody part a cappella. Um, check your starting pitch, and then when you go to repeat, check your starting pitch again. Um, and then you can add one part at a time, or um, you can add all parts at once, but very, very quietly. Um, Okay, so let's talk about some more challenges of a cappella singing. I think this is the main one, and this is why we spent so much time practicing um, holding your own part and staying in tune. Um, but some other considerations that make a cappella singing difficult um, is this whole aspect of blending with other singers. Um, and I had a teacher, a professor in college, who hated the word blend um, because to her, blending meant that you weren't really contributing or that you were trying to cover up your voice with other people's voices. Um, but blend, it's its a word you're gonna hear a lot when you talk about vocal music and acapella music um, specifically. So the big, big takeaway um, when it comes to blend is vowel shape. So if your vowels are matching, you will blend so much easier. You'll be in tune so much better than if your vowels are not matching. What I mean by that is there's more than one way to sing an E vowel. Try this with me. Sing a really, really bright closed E. Now drop your jaw. Sing E. Now even let your tongue come down if you can have that control. 
That's a way different tone than e. Wow, it's all the same vowel, but if you're singing that super bright e, and the person next to you is singing e, those will not blend. Even if you're singing the same pitch or the correct pitches, um, there is going to be this this not nice clash. Um, the reason for that is is you have these different frequencies that um, that are being brought out when you shape your vocal tract differently. So you might be bringing out all the high frequencies of that pitch while your neighbor is bringing out all the low frequencies. Um, so you just get this, this mismatched tone quality and that's not good for, for acapella singing or choral music in general. Um, only if the composer has said, Sopranos, super bright E, and you know, altos, super dark, rich E um, for a specific effect. But most of the time we want our vowels and vowel shapes to be matching. So if you're a new singer, look around at the more experienced singers and take a look at what their mouths look like. Also, uh, another really, really good tip I got from a different professor in college is to listen louder than you sing. So if you are just singing, you're going, Oh, say, can you say, and you're not paying attention, um, you know, also cracking is not great. But if you're not uh, paying attention to the other singers around you, you have no hope at blending with them. Um, so listen louder than you sing. Take a look at other people's mouth shapes. Listen to not only the pitches that they're singing, but the tone that they're producing. Is it darker, warmer, brighter? What's the dynamic? Um, so a lot of this information you might get from your music, but a lot of it has to come from the group itself and your conductor. And um, most good conductors will give you guidance on what kind of tone you're going for. Um, are we going for really you know, dark, classical, pure vowels, or are we doing a more poppy sound? Um, so defer to your conductor's instructions or the group leader. Um, Another concept uh, with blend is understanding where your part is in the musical texture. So what I mean is, are you singing melody? Are you singing a harmony part that's going along with the melody? Are you in the back? Are you singing oohs, ees, mms, things like that? Um, are you providing the percussion? Are you providing some sort of rhythmic thing? Um, this is gonna change throughout the song, by the way. So it's not, typically it's not that one singer has the melody the whole time, it's, it's often being traded. Um, so the, the general rule of thumb is if, if you have the melody part, you sing out or you sing a little bit louder than the other singers because if those other singers are covering you up, melody is covered and the melody is the most important thing. We wanna hear whatever that melody is. So if you're singing oohs and mms, that's uh, when you hang back. Um, so keeping that in mind, listen louder when you sing, match vowels. Um, ooh, and then here's another little tip is listen to a different part every time you rehearse. So this is kind of a trap that singers can fall into is only listening to yourself and your part. So I sing in a choir where I'm usually singing alto. And a lot of times um, I, I catch myself only listening to my fellow altos and kind of forgetting about the other parts. I'm not listening to the basses or the tenors or the sopranos. Um, you know, that's I, I'm better at that now than, than when I was a beginning singer, but it's still a really common trap to fall into. Um, and if you listen to, challenge yourself to listen to a different vocal part each time you rehearse this song, you're gonna hear how those parts interact with one another. So it's really cool. Sometimes you'll find, oh my goodness, I didn't realize altos and basses are sharing this melody together. Maybe the conductor pointed it out for you, but um, but there might be some, some symmetry or even some dissonance, some tension between parts that can really be informative and help you sing your part even better. Um, and then if you read music, score reading. Um, this, this skill is being able to look at the entire score, not just your part. Um, again, it's, 
it's difficult to do if you're not confident in the music. And if you are busy reading the notes the whole time, obviously you don't have the brain power or um, really the freedom to be looking at the entire score or listening to those other parts. If you're like, I don't know what part I'm singing and I'm just going to listen to, you know, Jennifer next to me and, and sing whatever she's singing. So if you're in that boat, I totally get it. I've been in that boat um, before I learned to read music. So I'm with you. Um, but if you are a more advanced singer and you can handle your part, you can read those pitches and sing them confidently, then you can take these next steps of more advanced musicianship, of score reading, um, you know, keeping an eye on your part, but then also seeing what are the tenors doing? Let me let me listen to the sopranos a little bit more this time and, and let me see how our, our parts interact. Um, good compositions, good arrangements um, will have really fun moments for you to bring out as a singer. So uh, you want to make the most of those and not just bulldoze over them only singing the notes. Um, so our last uh, point uh, that's a, a difficulty or maybe a unique challenge of acapella music uh, has to do with dynamics and phrasing. Dynamics is just musical volume. How loud are you singing? Um, but of course, it's it's more than that because your dynamics are, um, let me think of the word I'm looking for. Dynamics are relative. So you might see your piece of music and it says you're supposed to be singing mezzo piano. That means medium soft. Again, Italian music term. Um, so if you see in your score mezzo piano, medium soft, what do you do if everyone else in your part or even everyone else in the choir is singing true piano or pianissimo, very, very soft? Now, if you're sticking with that mezzo piano, you might stick out. So that's uh, it's always kind of this balancing act because you want to respect and observe what's in the musical score, but you also want to be blending with your group. Um, so dynamics are relative to the group size. Let's say you are a 16 person choir and you're performing a piece of music that normally would have like 60 voices or 80 voices. What does this mean for you? Something that might have been a mezzo forte with that big, big group giving a big, big sound, you might have to bump that up to forte or even fortissimo to get the impact with a smaller number of singers. So again, defer to your conductor or group leader. They're going to have some great guidance for you. Um, but remember that as a singer, as an acapella singer, you are solely responsible for the dynamic build of this song. So in a regular, you know, band situation, the drums can really help build and give intensity. Um, the whole band can come up and give this energy. But as an acapella singer, that is entirely up to you because you are the band. Um, so speaking on phrasing just a little bit, uh, in the same way that your vowels need to match for nobody to stick out, you also need to match your breaths and your phrasing. So if you're breathing at different times, even just by a split second, that's an issue because now you've got a little gap in the sound or a consonant where some other people are still hanging over. Um, so that, that will sound clunky as a group if your phrases and your breaths don't match. Um, okay, any questions on all of this stuff? Precious is saying they would love to sing deep. Okay. I wonder what your um what your range is right now. Cause we do have a, a video on range extension. You can check that out. Um, so I'm gonna keep my eye on the comments, but I think we'll keep practicing um staying in a key, uh, because that's super, super good practice for us. We practiced on happy birthday, we practiced on silent night. What else can we practice on? Christmas songs, public domain Christmas songs. How about jingle bells? 
I know Christmas is starting really, really early. <laughs> so let's just practice the chorus of Jingle Bell. So what we're practicing here is staying in tune, staying in the key. Um, I'm choosing the chorus because it repeats already. We have jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Hey, jingle bells, jingle bells. And you should be returning to the same pitch you started on. Okay, so let's pick a, a good key for all of us. I think key of C is good. So we are starting on either high voices, E4, Jingle bells, low voices, E3. We're singing only the chorus. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. If you struggled before, go ahead and get out that hand and create a visual map of the melody. I'll show you what that might look like. Jingle bells, jingle bells, all same note. Jingle. We'll skip up, jingle all, and big jump down because my pitch on all is lower than my pitch on jingle. Listen, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one horse open sleigh. Hey, and then we're back to jingle bells, and we're gonna see. Uh, if you're still in tune. Okay. Shall I sing with you? Shall I play chords? I think I'll do both. Jingle bells, jingle all the way. All right, I'm gonna play and sing. See if you can stay in tune as I remove those components. E4 or E3? One, two, ready, sing. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one horse open sleigh. Hey, jingle bells. Note check. Are you back on E4, E3? Good, let's keep going. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one horse open sleigh. Okay, I'm gonna take away my voice and now just play the chords. You keep singing the melody. One, two, here you go. Note check, E4, E3, you good? One, two, Keep going, jingle bells. And now you should have landed on C4 or C3. All right, taking away the piano and just singing a cappella. Here's your pitch. And again, halfway through, we'll do a note check. One, two. Ready, sing. Jingle bells. Note check. Keep going. Jingle bells, jingle bells. Last note check, you should have landed on C. Okay, now let's make it a little more difficult. I'm gonna sing a harmony this time. You aren't changing a thing. Start on E4, E3. One, two, here you go. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Hey, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh.
How'd that go? I hope I didn't throw you off. You should have landed on C. Last challenge. I'm harmonizing. You're providing melody. I'll sing quietly. E4 or E3. One, two. Here we go. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Hey, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. How'd that go? I know I went like way, way, way low because I didn't want to step on your part <laughs> like I did last time. How'd it go? Okay. Well, guys, this has been fun. Um, one last question from Low Country Hooper. Do you have any resources for sounding better a cappella recorded? I'm in a virtual choir, so I have to record my part. I sound okay in real life per someone not afraid to hurt my feelings, but awful recorded. Okay. So the question I have first is how is the setup and mic quality for you? Um, because if you're in a space that's like really, really echoey, um, or your mic is too far away or too close to you, that might be an issue. Um, yeah. So, so I'm wondering if the issue is the sound quality, technology, spacing, the room, or if it's that you're really not used to hearing yourself recorded and you're just having that kind of e reaction um, as, as a lot of us do. So what do, you, what do you think? If you could narrow down, is it tone sounds reedy and thin? Okay, okay. So one issue that's super, super common question for you. Are you used to hearing yourself on a recording or this is kind of like the first time you're having to do that? Um, because let me tell you, um, from inside your own head, your voice is going to sound a lot warmer, deeper, richer than it actually sounds to other people. And the reason for that is other people are hearing your sound waves traveling through, through air. And we're hearing those sound waves also kind of reverberate through our bones um, that are conducting the sound a little bit. And it's, it's uh, you're getting not only the in the air sound, but also from inside. And, um, and that tends to sound deeper and richer than just sound in the air. So it's possible, it's possible that your tone is not quite as rich and resonant as it sounds in your own head. And, and this is true for any of us. Um, everybody <laughs> kind of has to make peace with that. But then the next step for you is uh, learning to maximize your resonant space so that you are boosting those lower frequencies a little bit more. Um, so what I will send you is a, a short lesson uh, here on YouTube, and it talks about lowering your larynx, lifting up your soft palate, and using um, rounder vowel shapes, kind of using this O or O uh shape to your advantage to bring out that warmth and richness. So that, I think, um, let me get this link for you. This will at least put you on the right path. Okay, there you go. Um, Diana had a question. Is there an app to sing live with another person? That I'm not aware of. You're welcome. Um, I'm not aware of that. You could call someone. <laughs> a phone is gonna is gonna be the best live thing. Um, with any video conferencing, like Zoom, Skype, all of that, um, there is always a delay. So it might sound good. I don't know, Diana. I don't know. Um, yeah, latency is always going to be an issue. Um, so the thing is, you could sing with somebody, you could harmonize with them. And 
it's going to sound good to one of you, but it's not going to sound good to the other person. So I run into this when I teach online. If I'm singing, um, then yeah, good old phone calls. If I'm singing, then my student on the other side can sing along with me, but I'm hearing their sound with latency. So actually they're hearing me with some latency. So when they sing, they're late and then the, it's just compounded when I get their sound back. So it sounds bad to me, but it doesn't sound bad to them. So I guess that's that's what I'm trying to say is, is you could use an app sort of thing, but but phone call is is going to be the one because there might be a little bit of latency, but but certainly not comparable to to video conferencing. And last question, George, I notice when I sing with others or music, I can sing correctly, hit the notes, vibratos on point, pitch a solid. When I sing by myself, my muscle memory does not come into play. Um, that's interesting, George. Glad you enjoyed it, Manuel. You guys can sign off. Um, we'll be here next week. The time and day might change, so make sure that you are um, just checking on that. But uh, And thank you, Kevin. So glad you enjoyed it. Uh, George, muscle memory not coming into play when you sing a cappella. Um, what that'll take is developing an internal sense of pitch and rhythm. So if you see people singing a cappella, but they're like still grooving, you know that they've developed an internal sense of what that band would sound like if it was there. And I think that's my best advice to you, George, is to um, imagine that band, you know, that drum fill, bass line, whatever you can, that's uh, that you're like able to vibe with. Um, yeah, I, I think it's it's a confidence thing as well, because when you have what you're saying here, like you sound amazing with some support, but just it not great on your own. When you're singing a cappella by yourself, it's totally exposed. Um, there's nowhere to hide. So, yay. Uh, sorry, I'm responding to Tyler saying, can't wait to try this later today. Enjoy. Um, when you're singing a cappella, there's, there's nowhere to hide. You are just, uh, you're exposed. So I think if you can practice with some scaffolding or some... Um, pieces that you take away bit by bit. So rather than going from full band to acapella, just nothing but George, try singing with maybe an acoustic karaoke track. So maybe it's just piano or just guitar um, so that you are getting closer, <laughs> getting closer to acapella. So I think those two things, um, practice with more stripped down tracks and then uh, see if you can internalize that feel and and vibe of what the band provides so that you can be there in your head um okay and manuel i'm not a hundred percent sure it might be moving to wednesdays um yeah so george and low country hooper i am with you guys um Thank you. I appreciate you guys for, for being here. And this is tough. That's why we had the word advanced in this lesson, because it's a it's it's a big step to take. <laughs> um, OK, so as always, let me know in the forum um, if you have a request or suggestion for a next lesson. Um, all right. I'm going to let you guys go. But thank you so much for being here. This was fun. Bye.